Hey everyone, um, welcome to uh, the next episode, uh, which is focusing on um, how I groom Afghans. Um, so today we're going to go through the bathing process, bathing and drying process. So we'll get into the nitty gritty of things. And um, I guess further to this episode, if you have any questions or anything like that, please just reach out to me. Um, I'm on uh, Facebook just under my normal name. I've also set up a Facebook Strong Storm social page um, and the same for Instagram as well. I did a Twitter one, but who knows how that, um, whether that gets any attention or not. But yeah, reach out to me in any way. Um, I also have Strong Storm social at gmail.com. So um, I've done a little bit of a presentation deck. Um, I like to do these for um, like my actual job as well when I'm doing presentations and things like that. So if you would like a uh, PDF copy of the presentation that I do today, just flick me an email. That's uh, strongstormsocial at gmail.com and um, I'll send that straight through to you and hopefully it can help really. Um, you know, so I, I, I genuinely hope you get some um, some benefit out of out of this. Whether you have Afghans, um, whether, you're yeah, whether you're grooming Afghans or any other breed, I still think um, you can apply this type of methodology or variances, variances of um, to other breeds um, because I know I have. And again, like I said in the last episode, I just experiment a lot, right? So this is what works for me by the end of T's career. So I know like leading up into her last show season where she was like killing it. She was doing really well. We went... Um, Best of Breed Sydney Royal. We went runner-up best in group Sydney Royal. Um, she was doing some other things. But by, at that time, like I know with Sydney Royal, I was like nailing the um, her coat by then. And, um, you know, this is, this is exactly what I was doing um, in detail for preparing her for the, for the show ring. Now, I will kick off by saying my show groom and my uh, maintenance groom aren't too different. The only thing different is that I would condition the coat more in between shows. I, don't, I wouldn't mind if it was a, if, if if it had a bit more product in the coat, um, because after all, that will protect it and keep it hydrated and whatnot. So that's the only real difference that I would do. You know, I'd run a apologies, guys. Um, I'd run a, um, a, a like a, 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 a treatment conditioner, but I'll run I'll run through that anyway. So just to, I guess, what I did is, yeah, I did this little, um, this little slide deck um, and, and I'll go through that. We'll do a first, um, the first thing we'll do is like a bit of a recap of the last episode where I covered the products and equipment. Oh, I forgot. I want to introduce little Bjorn to everybody. Um, we have a litter of Boston Terriers at the moment and he's almost eight weeks. He's eight weeks and... Um, yeah, this is a little Bjorn, my little my little buddy. So I'm um, very, very happy with this little guy and I thought I'd bring him along for this episode. He can either sleep here or upstairs, so <laughs> may as well chill out with me. Um, so yeah, back to the uh, back to the presentation. Um, so just a quick recap on the products and equipment. We we touched on the brushes that I used. So we got the bristle, we got the pin, and we got the slicker. Um, and also with regards to the dryer, like, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I was pretty clear that I like the, the Simpson dryer, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. You know, I've got the hand dryer there, stacking table, the arm, the grooming arm, hydro bath. I use a twin tub, um, but honestly, for my whole, like, the whole time I had tea, well, I had tea showing, I was just doing, like, I, I had a, a $500 um, single tub hydro bath, like, you know, the crappiest one out there and it did us okay it just took me a little bit longer because i had to like i'm real anal with clearing um the product out in between cycles so between going from um conditioner to shampoo to final rinse i like get everything out of the tub so it's fresh with the product that i want um for each rinse cycle and then yeah i covered the products listen um yeah, so I just touched on the whitening shampoo that I use with 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 shade uh, with with tea. Sorry, um, the conditioner, reviver, the the horse polish that I use, and then the um, the Spectrum Ten treatment shampoo. So let's kick off into 
um, the, 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 the grooming process that I would do for the bath and the dry. Uh, what I thought I would do is just highlight, I guess, the key elements that you could take away um, from, from this episode, which are, I guess, my, my, the, the key do's that I have with, with grooming Afghan and maintaining Afghan coat. Um, the first one is um, do not brush the dog with the coat dry, so you always are watering the, the coat down when you when you um, when you're brushing the dog. So whether that's at a show or at home, please always spray with water before brushing. Don't just take a brush to the dry coat; it will just rip and tear, and and, and, and you'll lose coat. All right. So the big thing with the, with with Afghans, or for me in particular, with 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 any any breed, is um, keeping that coat you don't want to be basically ripping coat out needlessly right so um I, I would always try and keep as much coat as i can now as we move into the grooming process what i will do what i do um as a first step is put the dog on the table and i would feel through the coat just with my hands my fingers um now i get i can get sweaty fingers so i try not to um um touch the coat too much but I, I would, I, what I first do is just check for any knots and mats or anything like that. You want to get all of that out before you, took the, uh, before you put the dog in the bath, all right? So um, what I would do there is just use my fingers and just separate gently the mats or the knots um, until it's, it, it's, your, your dog is mat free. Uh, please, please try not to put a matted dog in the bath. You're just asking for absolute trouble. Um, worst case, if you can't pull, if you can't gently tease the mats out, um, use a pin brush, use a bris bristle brush, but just be very gentle and take your time. It's not a, this is, this is not a race. Um, and you want to do the right thing to save the coat. All right. So really take your time here because, um, you know, if you're looking to get the mats out prior to the bath, um, it's a really quick way to lose coat. So yeah, take your time, tease it out as best you can. Um, before before getting the dog in the bath. Now, I may if if I miss steps or anything like that, I'll I'll, I'll double back. But um, I've got some notes here on both of my screens, so hopefully I'll cover everything that I intend to cover. So the first thing I wanted to do is is, is basically highlight that you get the dog on the table, um, you take out the top knot, make sure um, that's all brushed through, brushed out nicely, and there's no mats there. Check the rest of the dog for mats. Remove all of those and then get the dog in the bath. Okay, well, number three of the, the key elements that I focus on um, is when the dog's in the bath, ensure that the product covers the whole coat. All right, don't just stand there and spray from afar and think that the whole coat's going to get covered. Get the nozzle into the coat, into the skin, and make sure that you're covering the whole dog. Um, you know, uh, have a think about it because if... if, 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 if it, Unless you're genuinely getting the hose to the whole dog, um, it's probably not getting the product. And if it's not getting the product, what's the point, really? Well, why, why are you doing it? So make sure that you're thorough in that process. And, um, so if you're conditioning the dog, make sure all the dog is being conditioned, especially the areas that need it most. It's the same with every part of the process. Um, the areas that need it most, make sure it's getting it. But, um, you know... Please be detailed on this and making sure that the product is getting to the whole dog. Um, do not skim on this. Now, um, again, Afghan coat is really good at protecting the skin from water. All right, so you will need to be pulling the coat apart and making sure that you get the product into um, the full length of the coat right down to the skin. The other part of the key element, again, guys, I'm going to go into more detail after this slide. Um, of all, like the whole process, but these are just the key elements that I've got here up on screen. The next one is when you get the dog out of the bath after you've done everything, before you take a dryer to it, go through the whole dog and, and just brush the coat straight. I just use a bristle brush for this. Um, pin brush is easier. Um, it will save you a little bit of time, but you may lose a bit of coat as well. So I, li the, I really like the bristle brush for this process because it stretches the coat straight as well. So if you're looking for that really nice straight finish, that's where the bristle brush is really good. 
So before I do um, before I do anything with regards to the dryer, I make sure that the dog's coat has been brushed out straight um, from head to tail. The next one, and this is the big one, um, and this is where I say no shortcuts, all right? So if you're looking for shortcuts, if you're looking for, you know, blah, 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 I'm not your guy. I'm all about doing the simple things uh as best you can, because really, that's all I've got. I'm not the, I'm, you know, I'm not the best groomer in the world, um, but I try and do the simple things right. And the, the 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 main one here is once you start drying the dog, do not stop until that dog has been dried completely. It's a big thing. And then what I do what I do suggest double check, triple check. Um, you know, you'll see with Shade's coat. I'm sorry, with T's coat. It's quite dark and I don't have the best eyesight. You know, I wear, I wear glasses. I put on um, a headlamp. I dry <laughs> with a headlamp so that I can get right, so I can see right to the skin to make sure that I'm drying to the skin. Because if you don't, um, you know, you can risk skin issues. Um, and from a, from, a, from an aesthetics perspective, it does coat, uh, the coat can get waves in it if you leave um, wet parts in it. The other big part of um, the grooming process is for me I I am brushing while I'm drying so what I do is I, 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 I brush I mean I'm drying and I'm working my way down the dog but the, the parts of the coat that I haven't got to yet for drying I make sure that it stays wet so I'm continually going around the dog spraying it keeping it straight so that when I do get to it, it's not partially dried by the air. All right, I want to be there. I want to be drying it with the dryer and my brush. Um, uh, while uh, I guess brushing the coat while drying it. So yeah, make sure you're keeping the the, the coat dry. I mean the coat wet. Sorry guys. Listen, I, I had COVID earlier this week, and um, while I'm, um, I'm I'm negative now, of course, but um, I think my you know I'm a bit slow. I'm a bit slow on the uptake. So. I apologize if it's um, if I if I stuff anything up. So yeah, there I guess um, my key elements. I'll go through them again. Um, do not brush a dry coat. Please demat before you put the dog in the bath. Ensure the product covers the whole dog to the skin. Brush the dog straight or brush the coat straight once it's out of the bath and uh, and you towel dried it and whatnot. Brush it straight before you put a dryer on it. You don't want to be well, – because the reason I say that is because sometimes you can just end up chasing your tail. If you are just going to – I'm just going to brush what I'm drying straight, um, sometimes you can't catch up because you get to the next part of the coat and it may not have – it may have some small knots in it or mats in it and things like that and you, you're spending your time there doing that rather than um, brushing and drying. <laughs> the big one, do not stop – until your dog's dried, all right? So once that dog goes in the bath, you are committed to drying that dog, all right? So you are in for the long haul. That's it. That's you done for three to four hours. Once that dog's in the bath, and you've got to be committed to that, in my opinion, if you want the, the best finish that you can possibly do. The other one to, keep to, fi to finalize, keep the coat wet until it's been dried by you. Don't let it sit there and be air dried. That's how you're going to get waves in the coat and you're not going to get the best show finish that you can possibly get. Over to the next page. All right, so I did a bit of a, um, on this screen, it, it, it's just a summary of each of the processes and I'm just going to go in, I'll go into more detail on each of the, on each of the steps. Um, so uh, let's, I guess, let's kick off what I do you now from a, from a grooming process. So I think I touched on it before, but first step, get the dog on the table, check for mats. If I see any mats or knots, um, get, tease them out with your fingers. Um, take the top knot out, so take the bands out of your top knot, brush them straight, get all that done. Now, make sure before you put the dog in the bath, there's no mats in the dog. Very, very important. Put your dog in the bath. What I do first is I rinse the dog with warm water. Um, completely, all right? So make sure you're getting the, the hose or the water 
to the skin. You want to be like like I said before, Afghan coat is is so good at repelling water that you you do need to separate, get the hose in there. Um, now whether you just even push the the nozzle of the hose right into the skin, that's up to you. I do it. So I do it like that's sometimes how I had to get through um, all of that coat at times. Otherwise, you're pulling the coat apart, wetting wetting it down. Rinse the dog completely. That's what I do. Step one. Then I um, what I do first is, is, is point one on this slide is I condition first. Now, this is something I was taught early on. The reason that um, we do this is to protect the coat. Shampoos on Afghan coat can be um, a little bit harsh at times and ultimately what we're looking to do is protect coat, right? We want to keep it healthy, but we want to protect it as well. So we, um, we condition first. Now, what I would do is I use that protein silk conditioner and I mix 150 mils of that conditioner into the tub um, within, in, the, in the hydro bath. So I think that's up to 10 litres. So I, I basically throw the, 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 the conditioner in the, the tub, fill the tub up, and then with that mix, I then rinse through the whole dog. So I'm using the, the, the hose mixed with the diluted conditioner and then rinse that through the whole dog and that's how I condition the dog. Um, depending on whether it's for a show or between shows, typically if I'm doing it for a show, I will run the conditioner through, I'll let it sit for a couple of minutes um, and then I will rinse it completely, okay? If I'm not doing a show, I'll let that conditioner sit for 10 minutes before going to the next process. And what, to, to be honest with you, I will probably leave the conditioner in when I move to the shampoo, all right? So I'll rinse the tub out, so the tub's completely rinsed, all remnants of conditioner is gone, and then I'll put the shampoo in. So just to recap that, 150 ml of conditioner in the 10, the 10 liter tub of water, dilute that through, rinse it through the whole dog, let it sit for a couple of minutes, then rinse with warm water completely, right? Then make sure the mixing tub where all the product goes is rinsed completely. So get all the residue of the conditioner out. Again, this is just what I do. Some people may leave residue in, blah, 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 but this is just my OCD na nature. So whether it makes a difference or not, I don't know, but it makes me feel happy. So I will um, rinse the tub completely. Then I will mix in... Um, so once the dog's been completely rinsed, tub's rinsed, I will uh, throw in the, the whitening shampoo, 100 ml of the whitening shampoo into the tub, dilute that down again. So fill the tub up again, the 10 litre tub, and then repeat the process. So I will run that through the whole dog. Again, I'm separating coat, I'm getting the nozzle into the skin, I'm making sure that shampoo is getting into the whole dog, all right? Covering all of the coat from the skin to the tips. Then once that process is done, I'll rinse the dog again. All right. And this is when um, we get to the final rinse, which is my show rinse. And this is where I guess I, um, <laughs> this is where I think the magic happens and where I, 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 I get a little bit carried away with the, with the final rinse. Cause I feel like this is like my little touch to the coat um, and I carry on probably a little bit too much about the final rinse. But what I do do is I, I use 150 ml of the, um, the, the, the horse shampoo, what I said from the original product and equipment, with the 10 litres of water, but I have the water cold, all right? So this is where I... Um, I feel it makes a difference, all right? So when we're talking about washing, shampooing, conditioning, all that sort of stuff, warm water is really good to help expand the hair cuticles, right? Cold water helps to snap it closed. So my theory is I've already, I've already cleaned the coat. The coat's clean. The cuticles are clean. So now what I do is combination of the cold water with the hair polish is a snap the hair closed. So 
so the cuticle is closed and then I'm covering it with the polish. All right, so then the external portion of the, the coat is not, becomes nice and shiny. All right, so that's my theory in my head. Um, it, it seems to have worked, um, but I'm a, I'm a believer of that. So I'm a believer of doing that final rinse in cold water or as cold as a dog can handle, pending the time of year, pending whether you're doing it inside or outside as well. So if you're doing it inside, it's temperature controlled. It's not such a big deal for the dog. If you're doing it outside in the middle of winter, it's a different kettle of fish. You know, you've got to take the dog's um, um, health and well-being into, into account as well. All right. So, um, but yeah, please keep that in mind. I'm a believer, I'm a big believer of um, um, using cold water with that final rinse. So then what I do after that, once I've done the final rinse, I don't rinse it out. All right. So I leave that rinse in. And this is where I play with I play with the amount of product that I have in that final rinse. So if the coat is dry and I feel it needs more hydration, I'll add reviver into the coat, into the final rinse. All right, so then that's where I sort of play with it a bit. Um, sometimes I've been known to put in conditioner as well, um, but this is where I think it's, it's, it's safe to just play with the hair polish or OMG together with Reviver, depending on your dog's coat condition. When he gets really healthy and, 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 and you've been doing this process for a while now, you, can, you, don't, you won't need the Reviver um, and you can just play with your levels of hair polish or OMG pending on the coat and the time of year. So that's that process. Um, now I've just, I'm going to check my notes. Sorry if I'm, I'm reading while I'm, I'm doing this because I just want to make sure I've covered everything before going on. Warm water, completely rinse everything, um, blah, blah, blah. It's coat dry, heavy, golf ball. Yep, okay. So now with the Reviver, if you're going to add the Reviver, the best place to start is just to, to shake the bottle, put a golf, a, a, the size of a golf ball um, in, uh, in your palm and just throw that in with, the, with, the, uh, with the, uh, the hair polish and then mix it through. That's what I do there. Then once that's all done, so I leave that rinse in, I bring the dog out, Put popper on the table. Now I'm I'm the type of person that I have my dogs stand while I'm drying. I can't do the lying down thing. I just I can't do it uh, for so many reasons. Uh, I just anyway, my dogs are fine when it comes to standing for the period of time that they're on the table. Um, I've never had an issue with it, and it's the way that I get the best finish possible. Obviously, you want to keep them entertained and keep them happy. If that means giving them treats having a bit of a rest and just giving them a pat and all that sort of stuff, um, it's very important to keep them happy while they're on the table. You don't want them stressing out. Um, it just stops being fun for everybody. A, a, a difficult dog to dry is, is an absolute nightmare. And, you know, uh, as long as I keep them happy on the table, I never, I've never had a problem with um, having a fussy dog or anything like that. So what I do, I get them on the table, I tie them up to the, to the arm, and then basically with my hands, I go around to each leg and I just uh, 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 pull the water out. So I just, uh, just uh, drain the water out. Once I do that to each leg, I then just go around the whole dog um, with a towel and just towel, towel dry. Once that's done, I um, brush out the top knot and I tie that up and then I put a snood on. And the snood will cover from here and the hoodie. And the hood, so the top knot, so just under the neck here, so the the majority of the bib will be exposed, but I cover the top knot and the hood of the dog, and I leave that to the end, all right? And then you don't have to stress about it; it doesn't dry out, stays straight, etc. Then, once all that's done, this is very important. Once all that's done, I then grab the bristle bristle brush. I've got my spray, and I go through the dog, and I just brush the dog out just like you would before a dog show or anything like that. And that way, when you're ready to start drying, the dog's been brushed straight, all right? So the coat's straight, it's laying perfectly. You can sit back and look at your dog um, and you can see just straight coat, all right? So it's, uh, for me, it's a very important pro piece, piece of the process before you dive into, into the drying. Um, I think I may have mentioned it before. It just helps me... Um, 
prevent myself having to chase, I guess, the dry. And what I mean by that is if I get to certain parts of the coat and I, and I see um, a mat or a knot and I've got to stop and I've got to start teasing out the mat or blah, 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 um, it just it affects my um, drying process and I don't like it. So I make sure all the mats and everything is, is, is done and everything's out of the way before I begin the drying process. Now, everyone's going to be a little bit different of where they start to dry. I always start um, at the shoulders on the show side. That's where I start. I start up the top up here and then I work my way down the front leg. And then I'll finish the front and the bib. So I cover that whole piece off before I start moving back. And then what I do is I go back to the, um, to the side coat, work my way back to the rear legs before starting at the front again on the off show side. What I do, and, and, and I find this really important when I'm drying is, and the reason, the reason why we all have um, stand dries, so we're not having one hand here and, 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 and one hand with a brush, is that I peel the coat back and then the dryer is coming from this way, let's say. So I'm peeling, peeling the coat back this way. And then what's forward is what, you, is what you're drying. And you're drying in the way, the same direction as the, as the dryer is blowing. Really, really important. So then that's, that's what I do. And then that way you're layering uh, onto dry coat. So you're not, you're not drying um, dry coat and then it's sitting on wet coat. Okay, so you're drying coat and you're moving back. And that way you're always drying back onto dry coat. And for me personally, as I dry, I want the coat sitting as if I'm ready to go in the ring. So I want it just sitting perfectly. And that's why I can't deal with those um, heavy dryers. So the, what, what are they called? The blow dryers or whatever they are. The force fan dryers or whatever they're called. Those things. Because they just throw the coat everywhere. And that's why I, I, like, I love the, the Simpson dryer so much. Is because it can um, the the pressure of the air is just perfect. It doesn't mess the coat up. So basically, as I'm drying the coat, it's 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 the coat is sitting there flat as if I was to go in the show ring, and the rest of the dog is wet. All right, so that's how I um, I like to dry. Now, what have I got next? Sorry about this. I just I don't I don't want to miss anything, so I've I've put some notes down. Um, Ensure the blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then that's, that's pretty much the process, to be honest with you. So then once I've done, I finish off to do the top knot and the, the hood, right? So um, because I'm such a short ass, I do that with the dog's um, head in my lap. And I think I touched that on the, maybe I touched that on that on the uh, previous, um, previous episode. Anyway. So that's that's pretty much the process um, from a from a, uh, a grooming perspective um, when it comes to me and the Afghans. Now, it's 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 a it's one thing just to talk about it, and that's why I've done this presentation um, to give you guys, I guess, a small type of visual or some some key points to take away. And and again, if you would like a copy of this in PDF format, um, I'm happy to email it to you. So um, flick me an email at strongstormsocial at gmail.com and I'll send that out to you, no dramas whatsoever. What I will do also, I'm going to do another episode on the detail work. So the flat work of the saddle and the tail, um, the bib, the hoodie, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I'll just share what I do um, in that respect. And also the next time I can get my hands on an Afghan, I'll do a, I'll video myself um uh, grooming that and I'll cut it down so it's a it's a nice little video a reference video for you guys so that's um that's pretty much it for this episode so just to to cover it off again condition first rinse it all out shampoo rinse it all out that's all done with warm water final rinse hair polish cold water all the way through the dog. Leave it in the dog. When you go out, um, um, 
uh, press all the water out of the dog, down the legs, down the leg, uh, down, down the front, down the back. Then, br- then brush your dog's coat dry before you start drying. Then once you start drying, I start at the front shoulder, work my way down. So I'll do the shoulder, then I'll do the leg, inside and outside. Then I do the front and the bib, and then I start on the side coat. The whole time, keeping the dog, uh, the coat that I haven't dried yet, wet. It's really important. Don't let it dry out. And that's it, really. Um, What I would say as well, whatever you're drying, be brushing with the bristle. Ah, that's probably what I haven't touched on enough. So from a, a brush perspective, when I'm drying, I'm holding the coat back and I'm brushing with the bristle. Always brush. And that's how you get the coat as straight as possible. I don't use um, hair straighteners and all that sort of stuff because it can damage the coat, all right? So if you do the simple things right um, through this process, which is, you know, if you're brushing while you're drying and, and the whole dog is dried and you're not leaving any wet, wet spots, um, and it's really important to double and triple tra- check that before you walk away. You won't get any waves and all that sort of stuff, and you won't need to wear, use those irons and risk um, burning your dog's coat. So I, f- I hope you found that helpful, um, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Um, and like I said, drop me an email, drop me a message, and I'm happy to um, share this little deck with you as well. So all the best, guys, and um, I hope... You've enjoyed seeing little Bjorn. I love him very much. All right, cheers, guys. Bye.